Hey everyone, welcome to Judging for the Win. I'm Dave, and this is my daily ruling. I don't think we could really call this All Will Be One Week if we didn't have at least one video about All Will Be One. You know, the card that they actually named the set after. Or maybe they named the card after the set. I'm not really sure, what do you think? Anyway, this is probably the most interesting triggered ability as far as rules go, because it does a lot of different stuff and it interacts with a lot of different common mechanics in some non-obvious ways. So for this video, I'm gonna go through some of the most common ones that I think would be showing up the most. Okay, so here's where we're gonna start off. It's a pretty straightforward one. We're gonna take a look at this card, Free From Flesh. And if you take a look, all it does is it puts two oil counters on a creature. So if you take a look at the triggered ability that's on All Will Be One, you can see that that's gonna cause that triggered ability to trigger because we put one or more counters on a permanent. And so we're gonna get one trigger that's gonna be dealing two damage. Okay, pretty straightforward. Let's move on to the next level of difficulty. And that would be this card here, Black Sun Zenith. So Black Sun Zenith will say that we're casting it for X equals two to put two minus one counters on each creature. Okay, so there isn't gonna probably be a whole lot of comprehensive rules citations in this video because most of the difficulty in questions involving this card happens when you're trying to consider exactly what happens in the game. And so you need to know exactly what's putting the counters on and match that with exactly what it says on All Will Be One. So if you take a look at this, we've got a lot of instances of us putting two counters on a permanent. So we're putting one or more counters on a permanent a lot of times. One time for each creature, for, in fact. And so what that means is that we're going to have one trigger from All Will Be One for each creature that we put one or more counters onto. So that means we're going to have one trigger for each creature that we put counters onto, and each of those triggers is going to deal two damage. That is a lot of hurt. Okay, so if you apply the same exact line of reasoning, you can see exactly how All Will Be One works with Proliferate, and it's the exact same kind of thing. Each individual thing that you proliferate onto, that's gonna be one instance of you putting a counter on a permanent or player. And so that means that you're going to be getting a total number of counter triggers equal to the number of things that you proliferated onto. And each of them is gonna be dealing one damage. I think it's kind of a cool flavor win to see how the card actually encourages you to proliferate onto the most possible number of things, which is probably exactly what All Will Be One would want to do if you've asked a Phyrexian about it. All right. So now let's take a look at another kind of thing. And this is another one that comes up quite a lot. It's something that enters the battlefield with counters on it. So for example, let's take a look at this card here, Axiom Engraver. And it says it enters the battlefield with two oil counters. So if you take a look, it's actually a little bit different from the stuff that we've had so far. We don't have it already on the battlefield and then we put two counters onto it. Rather, we just have it enter the battlefield with counters already there. So does that count as a triggering event for All Will Be One or not? And so it's kind of interesting to see, in order to answer this question, we're gonna to need to understand exactly how the triggered ability is going to trigger and exactly what is happening to put counters on the Axiom Engraver. So if we take a look, this sort of template that we see on Axiom Engraver, anything that says this enters the battlefield with da 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 counters, that would be considered a replacement effect. And the way that replacement effects work would be Anytime something is gonna happen in the game, the game checks to see if there's a replacement effect that might affect what's about to happen. And if there is, then the original event just doesn't happen at all, and it gets completely replaced by the new modified event. So that's what's gonna happen anytime the Axiom Engraver is about to enter the battlefield. The game is gonna see that it's entering the battlefield, and it's gonna replace the event of this entering the battlefield with this entering the battlefield with two counters on it. Now, as far as whether this would cause the all will be one to trigger, the answer is yes. And the reason is because we have this specific rule that defines exactly what this trigger condition is looking for. As you can see, entering the battlefield with counters already on the permanent does indeed fall under the definition that we have in this rule for what that trigger condition means. And so that means that if you were to play the Axiom Engraver with the all will be one out, you would be getting two damage on some target. Great. Okay, now let's take it up another notch of difficulty and we'll see what would happen if we had a doubling season in play at the same time as this was going on. So this is kind of interesting how this works out too. You can see that doubling season uses the word instead. That means that it's also a replacement effect. So that means that when this card is entering the battlefield, the Axiom Engraver, then the game is gonna to check to see if there's any replacement effects that need to apply, just like before, and there will be one. There's gonna be one from the Axiom Engraver's own ability that makes it enter with two counters on it. 
However, after that, the game is going to check to see if there's any more replacement effects that need to apply. And hey, what do you know? The doubling season is right there, ready to go. And so that means that the event of the Axiom Engraver entering with two counters, that one is going to go completely away, and it's going to be replaced with yet another version of that event. In this case, the Axiom Engraver entering the battlefield with four oil counters on it. And so that's the event that actually physically does happen in the game. So when the all will be one checks to see if it should trigger, it indeed will, and it'll have one trigger that does four damage. This is because we're not having the Axiom Engraver enter the battlefield with two counters on it and then putting two more additional counters on it. Rather, we're having it enter the battlefield with all four counters on there. And so that's what the triggered ability from All Will Be One is going to trigger off of. All right, now this is kind of interesting if you consider it in the case of this new card from the new set, Acre Plate Golem. So as you can see, Acre Plate Golem does something kind of similar in that it adds an additional oil counter, but it does it with a completely different way. It uses a triggered ability. You can see because it uses the word whenever. And what that means is that it doesn't modify the event of the Axiom Engraver entering the battlefield. Rather, what actually happens is you're going to have the Axiom Engraver about to enter the battlefield, and the game is going to see that there's a replacement effect from Axiom Engraver that changes that event to Axiom Engraver enters with two counters on it. So it's going to enter the battlefield with two oil counters on it, and that is going to cause some triggered abilities to trigger. One is going to be the one from the Acre Plate Golem, which means that it's going to put an additional oil counter on that permanent. The other triggered ability is going to be the one from All is All Will Be One, and that is going to deal two damage to something. After the Acre Plate Golem triggered ability resolves, that's going to put another oil counter onto the Axiom Engraver, and that means that we're going to get another trigger from the All Will Be One, and that one is going to deal one damage to something. All right, that was pretty cool, right? What's next? Ooh, yeah, okay, this is another really awesome one. So what would happen if we were to recommission the Axiom Engraver while we had an All Will Be One? Okay, so if that's the case, we're going to take a look and we see that Recommission uses the same sort of template, the enters the battlefield with da 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 counters on it, and that means that this too is considered to be a replacement effect. So that means that in this case, there's going to be two replacement effects that want to apply to the event of moving the Axiom Engraver onto the battlefield. We have one from Axiom Engraver itself, and we have one from the Recommission, and it doesn't really matter which order these replacement effects apply in, the net result is going to be the same, which is that the Axiom Engraver is entering the battlefield with two oil counters and one plus one plus one counter. All right, so how does that translate into All Will Be One triggers? Well, it turns out that if you take a look at All Will Be One, it doesn't care about the fact that there's two different kinds of counters that are putting on this creature. It just cares that there's three total counters that are being put on it. And so what that means is that we would get one trigger that is three damage. And again, that's because we have replacement effects, which means that the event that actually physically happens in the game is the event of putting Axiom Engraver onto the battlefield with all three of these counters. And that All Will Be One does not have anything that says that it cares about a distinction between different types of counters. All right, so that was really awesome. Hopefully everybody was able to go through all of that okay. Now we're going to move on to putting counters, specifically poison counters, onto players. And this is, of course, something that All Will Be One is very interested in. So let's take a look at some of the different combinations that we might have. And, of course, the toxic mechanics is the first one that really screams out at us. It's in the same set, after all. So let's take a look at how that would work out. So if we had just a creature that had Toxic 2 that was attacking, then that damage that the Toxic 2 creature deals would, in fact, result in two poison counters being put onto the defending player. Okay, great. So that would mean one trigger from All Will Be One that does a total of two damage. All right, nothing super crazy going on here, not just yet anyway, but what would happen if we had a creature that had Toxic 2 and also Toxic 1? So I had a video earlier this week where I talked about how if you had a creature that had multiple instances of the Toxic ability, then when it dealt the damage to the opponent, you would get a combined number of poison counters being put onto the defending player. And so Toxic 1 and Toxic 2 basically combine together into Toxic 3. So you would have one instance of the creature putting three poison counters onto the defending player. So that would mean you would get one trigger from All Will Be One that does three damage. All right, now that is also going to be the exact same thing if you had multiple creatures that had the Toxic ability. So for example, a creature that had Toxic 1 and a second creature that had Toxic 2. Again, the combat damage gets dealt all at the same time. So the game event where the player is getting the poison counters, that's also going to be one event where the person gets three total poison counters. And so again, you would have only one trigger that did three damage. Okay, 
So that would be how it works with the toxic ability. Now, here's another ability, it's called poisonous. And it works basically exactly the same as toxic in almost all situations, except for a few. That's because the way that toxic works is actually putting an additional effect on the damage that gets dealt. Whereas with the poisonous ability, it is a triggered ability that triggers when the damage happens. And so what that means is that if you were to have a creature that had poisonous one and poisonous three that dealt some damage to the opponent, well, that would not work the exact same way as what we were just talking about with Toxic, where the all is one, we'll be putting one trigger that has a total amount of damage equal to the combined number of poison counters that were dealt out. Rather, you've got two different triggered abilities that will resolve one at a time. So that would mean there's two separate instances of a player getting poison counters. Therefore, the all will be one will have two different triggers, one for the first amount of poison that we dealt, and the second for the second amount of poison counters that we dealt out. That's kind of weird, but I guess that's how it works. And of course, now we can talk about the infect mechanic. So infect is another thing that happens at the same time as the damage is dealt as an additional effect for the damage. And so what happens is instead of losing life, the player takes that many poison counters. And so that would mean that if we had multiple infect creatures or even some infect creatures and some toxic creatures, that would work exactly the same way as what I was talking about when we had the example where there were multiple toxic creatures that dealt damage. So the creatures that dealt damage would be dealing the poison counters at the exact same time as the damage. Now, some people might be thinking, hey, wait a sec, Dave, I've been playing magic for a while and I know that if you have a triggered ability that says something like, whenever you gain life, and you were to attack with two lifelink creatures, then that would in fact result in two different instances of that whenever you gain life triggered ability triggering. And so how does that really match up together with what we're talking about here, where you're saying that if you have multiple toxic creatures or some toxic and infect creatures together dealing damage to the opponent, then that doesn't give you multiple instances of the triggered ability from all will be one. And that is a really great question. Some people brought this up when I talked about this sort of interaction in my how does toxic stack work video. And so the answer to that question is we have a specific rule in the comprehensive rules that defines that a triggered ability with a trigger condition of whenever you gain life is actually looking for whenever a source causes you to gain life. We do not have a similar rule that says a trigger condition of whenever you put counters on a player actually means whenever a source causes you to have to put counters on a player. And so what that means is that if there are two different sources that make you put counters on a player at the exact same time, then you're only gonna have one instance of that triggered ability triggering. Kind of interesting, right? Finally, here's one last really cool thing that I wanted to end up with. Let's say that through some complicated machinery that you can devise yourself, you manage to give the infect mechanic to all will be one. Okay, great. That means that any time the all will be one's triggered ability deals damage to the opponent, you're dealing that damage in the form of poison counters, which means that it's gonna cause that triggered ability to trigger again. And you could deal some more damage to the opponent to give them some more poison counters and keep on doing that until your opponent tapped out. That is a really awesome way to win the game. Unfortunately, this trick does not work out as well if you were to try to use the toxic or poisonous mechanics. That's because both of those specifically key off of combat damage, and so that would not count as an instance of combat damage to give yourself some additional instances of that trigger. But that's all I have for you today. How did you do? Join me again next time for another daily ruling, but until then, I hope you have a great day.